Well, to discuss this, we're joined now from Addis Ababa by Mohamed Ademo. He's an Oromo journalist and editor of the online magazine opride.com. We have Awal Alo, who's a lecturer in law at Keele University in the UK. And in Washington, D.C. is journalist and activist Abebe Gelo. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Mohamed, let me start with you. Abe mania, as they call it. Is there more hope or is there more hype? Where do you stand? I think this country has, it has never been more hopeful. I think there is a great deal of hope and optimism and the people are jealously guarding this moment against those who want to maintain the status quo. Uh, it, I think Abi Mania is an understatement because the Prime Minister has ushered in reforms at a speed this country has never seen uh, from the release of prisoners to the review of some of the repressive laws, uh, rapprochement with Eritrea. There's a laundry list of changes that he's, uh, he has introduced. And uh, generally, there's a feeling in this country that uh, there is no more uh, better qualified to lead this country through this transition. Abebe, let me understand and help me understand how symbolically significant it was when we had the Oromo Liberation Front not being treated as terrorists anymore and the leaders returning to the capital with their flag. Tell me what that meant. Uh, it means a lot uh, because uh, the Oromo People's Liberation Front, OLF, uh, was leveled as a terrorist uh, organization, as he pointed out, uh, by the previous uh, TPLF-dominated regime. Uh, the country has taken a reform uh, to a higher level, you know, under the leadership of uh, Abiy Yahamed. And uh, it's not only the return of the OLF, uh, which is significant, the, the return of uh, the patriotic Gimbo Sabat, uh, Gimbo Sabat leadership is also uh, a momentous uh, event in Ethiopian political uh, history, uh, especially after uh, Abiy Yahamed has been elected. Uh, you know, uh, the reform is going well, and uh, I believe that uh, taking this kind of measure will pave the way for right. uh, a, better, a better future for Ethiopia. Abebe, at the first sign of trouble, when there were clashes, the first spasm of trouble, if you like, we saw that the state blocked mobile internet, more than a thousand people were arrested. So for many, they've seen this movie before, does that suggest that reform is going to take a long time because ultimately the, the state still reflexively responds in the way it has over the past couple decades. Uh, that's actually uh, true uh, in uh, the sense that, uh, you know, this, this reform will not be easy. There will be obstacles on the way. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, the steps uh, that have been taken by uh, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed uh, will pave the way for uh, a greater reform. That's my, in my opinion. But as you pointed out, there are also problems here and there. Uh, there are ethnic clashes. One of the obstacles for the reform agenda of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed is ethnic politics. Uh, ethnic politics has been intensified for various reasons. The return of the uh, OLF has also amplified that because uh, it's uh, uh, basically an ethnic-based uh, group. Right. Uh, but if uh, you know uh, the reform continues unabated. I believe that, uh, you know, the Prime Minister will be able to stir uh, the way toward this, a better uh, future. So, um, I will, we have Abi saying, I'm not a king. My ultimate objective is to see democratic elections in Ethiopia. If that happened, I'll feel I fulfilled my objective. Do you believe him, Awo? I certainly do. Um, I think he's very genuine. He's very determined. Uh, when he says those things. And I have been watching the Ethiopian political scene for the last uh, five, six years, and I don't think I have ever seen any individual, both within the ruling coalition and within the opposition, who have the political capital, the cultural uh, appeal, and as well as the dynamism and organizational competence uh, that can kind of steer this country out of this uh, troubled water. So I certainly believe him, yes. Mohamed Ademo, we heard from Abebe that ethnic politics have been amplified recently. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. Uh, I think uh, uh, the, the return of Gimbo 7 in OLF uh, means that there are 
groups that has divergent expression, divergent political persuasions coming to the country. They bring their political uh, uh, perspective, and this whole ethnic, ethnicized conflict started when uh, Gimbo Sebe returned in the country was literally awash with a flag that was uh, outlawed under the previous uh, government. And uh, when OLF came, the Oromo activists who support the OLF wanted to put up their flags, and uh, some of the Gimbo Seven supporters, uh, alleged supporters, wanted to prevent that. And that sort of led to a standoff, and uh, it was mishandled. Uh, but uh, I think uh, this is a, a multinational federation. And ethnicity has always been around, and it, the country is uh, organized along ethnic lines. It's not a perfect system, but I think it needs to be tested. Uh, this idea that uh, uh, the, the return of oil left somehow uh, led to uh, intensification of ethnic politics is, I think, uh, a little bit uh, uh, inaccurate. Uh, we need to manage it. I think we need to find a way to uh, balance between opening up, but also making sure that people respect the law of the land and there, there are symbols and uh, 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 narratives that we don't agree on. I think we need uh, civic uh, conversations around those issues so that we can settle, we can agree on a flag for this nation, for example, and many other issues that we need to talk about. Uh, but I think the fear of uh, ethnicity uh, it just shows that uh, uh, maybe uh, a political uh, predisposition of certain groups and certain individuals who see ethnicity as the boogeyman, whereas this is a country emerging from uh, authoritarianism, and, and people uh, feel free. And it's almost as if the frustrations and the anger, their aspirations, has been bottled up, and now you open it up, and, and that is leading to, uh, you know, instances of people taking the, the law onto their hands and mm -hmm. being a bit ter territorial here and there. Abebe, has the man just given a strong rebuttal of your point? Uh, I don't think so, because ethnic politics uh, has been a major problem in, in Ethiopia for the last uh, 27 years. Uh, because uh, the TPLF wanted uh, you know, to put in place a divide and rule strategy to rule e Ethiopia. Uh, as a result of that, you know, we have ethnic federation and uh, a constitution uh, based on ethnicity. Ethnicity, as you know, is... Uh, uh, one of uh, the main uh, sources of conflict around the world. Uh, th there are uh, no longer many conflicts uh, between countries, uh, but uh, conflict is among ethnic groups uh, has destabilized so many countries. Uh, and, and it led to, uh, you know, the disintegration of uh, countries like uh, the former Yugoslavia, and it led to uh, genocide in Rwanda. So it Ethiopia will face a major problem from ethnic politics. There is no doubt about that. Uh, because as long as people are organized for political objectives around uh, ethnicity, uh, there will be conflict of interests. Uh, you know, right. uh, these conflicting interests will definitely lead to uh, destabilization uh, of the country. But given if that I the give you an example, for Sorry. instance, from okay, go ahead. January go ahead. to uh, June uh, this year, uh, around 1.4 million people have been displaced in, in Ethiopia, uh, topping... Syria and uh, the Congo Democratic Republic. Uh, so th this is not because of uh, a peaceful transition along uh, ethnic line, but because of the ethnic conflict. Right. So uh, if ethnicity is not addressed in Ethiopia, it will continue to be a, a major problem, and it will undermine the reform agenda of uh, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. Okay, so Abebe, isn't it interesting, though, that this man, as the Prime Minister, with his mixed background, is able to absorb a lot of this because he, his father was Muslim and his, I think, mother was Orthodox and he's a Protestant right now and he's an Oromo and so forth. So he ticks a lot of boxes for enough people to trust him. Isn't that the whole point? What you're saying is that you have hypothetical fears that Ethiopia might return back to old grievances, but isn't this the right man to take you forward? Uh, I don't have any doubt that uh, Abiy Ahmed is the right uh, man to, to take Ethiopia forward. Uh, as uh, you pointed out, uh, he has a, a very interesting uh, background, you know, mixed background, Christian Oromo, uh, Muslim background, which is very interesting in Ethiopia. You know, this mixed background is an asset for him. But at the same time, you know, Ethiopia has 
80 uh, ethnic groups, around 80 ethnic groups with their own uh, political groups and conflicting aspirations and uh, interests. So this will be a major obstacle. That's why I said ethnicity will be a major obstacle for the prime minister, despite his background, despite uh, the fact that he wants to, to unify the country and uh, take it forward. And let me go to Awal Alo as we look at the big picture here. The man's been in, in office. For... Okay, okay, come in, Mohammed. So Awal, my apologies. I'm going to come to you in a m minute, but Mohammed wants to jump in. Mohammed. I just want to make sure that, you know, I used to sit where Abeba is sitting right now, and uh, the reality of the matter on this, gr on this side uh, is the Prime Minister is on the record, and, and several law enforcement uh, uh, officials have been on the record saying that there are groups who want to exploit uh, ethnic differences, ethnic fault lines in this country. You can look at the problems that we've seen in the, uh, between the Somali and Oromo communities along the eastern border. The, the conflict that Abeba was mentioning uh, between the Guji Oromo and the Gedio in a in, in few other episodes of uh, ethnic uh, unrest. Those things are being, those uh, instances are at least based on the official information, including from the Prime Minister, which Abebe says that is the right man to lead this country. Is, these are being instigated by uh, the old guard and elements within the deep state who wants to return to the status quo. I think we need to look at the facts, and, and I'm not suggesting that there is no ethnic dimension to this, these conflicts, but there are groups who are ex exploiting those fault lines, and I think we need to look at that and have a conversation, serious conversation about how do we move from here forward uh, into democracy, but also find an arrangement that works for everyone, uh, not necessarily my perspective or the perspective of Abebe and uh, the Gimbal 7 or some other groups who wants to return to sort of a more uh, uni un unitary form of uh, government. And I think this, this is a, a very diverse nation and, 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 and uh, uh, ethnic federalism or the multinational federalism celebrates those pluralism and those diversity. I think we need to embrace that. We need to find a balance uh, where we celebrate our diversity without necessarily uh, building boundaries and, and, and need to re-educate our people. Abebe is right in saying that the previous government has used a divide and rule strategy to, to try to tell people this is your piece of the land and nobody else right. belongs here other than yourself. We need to re-educate uh, people. I don't think the problem fundamentally is of the structure, but it's the way it has been instrumentalized and the way it has been abused in the fact that it has never been implemented. In the fact that those same groups are now trying to exploit the same fault lines for their political benefits. Now, unfortunately, we've lost our Allo at Kiel University due to a technical issue. That's really unfortunate. But let me go back to you, uh, Abebe. Mohammed said, you know, I used to be in your position, Abebe, and, and I remember as well talking to Mohammed when he was coming out of D.C., being critical of the government. He was critical of a different administration. He was critical of Haile Mariam Dessalain, and we used to have these statements from the Ethiopian embassy in the UK, that was kind of the best we could ever get from the Ethiopian government back then a couple of years ago. And Mohammed was on the other side of the fence being highly critical of the government. It, it reminds me of the diaspora. Let me ask you, Abebe, what will it take for Ethiopians in the diaspora to go back home and to, to have enough trust in Abiy Ahmed and enough trust in the future to leave their lives, their jobs, and whatever they're doing, whether it's in D.C. or the U.K., and say we want to give it a shot back home. Uh, thank you again. Uh, you know, the Ethiopian diaspora uh, has embraced uh, uh, Dr. Abiy Yahamed, you know, since he came power. People have given him endorsement. Uh, Well-known activists and dissidents have uh, praised his leadership. And in fact, uh, you know, uh, the man has been incredible. Uh, he's bold in taking actions. He has transformed the political landscape, there is no doubt about that. But at the same time, the system has not changed. Even if uh, there is a change of leadership, uh, the system remains intact. Uh, the CPLF has still uh, got uh, a presence, a significant presence in the current uh, system. Uh, and they are trying to, to undermine uh, this prime minister in, in many, many ways. Uh, Mohammed mentioned uh, what is also happening, you know, especially in terms of instigating ethnic violence in many parts of the country, uh, and people still believe that the TPLF is behind it. 
So the deep elf wants to uh, return to the past, you know, to restore the, the status quo. As long as this uh, internal power struggle uh, is, is going on, I don't think that people we will have uh, patience and trust for so long. So, uh, you know, uh, significant steps must be uh, taken to purge those elements within the system uh, that undermine the, the pro not only the, the prime minister, but the progress that uh, the country is making. If uh, the situation stabilizes, I'm sure so many people can return home and uh, contribute their share, you know, for the progress of the country, including myself. I have been in exile for the last uh, 20 years, and I would like to return to my country. It's my country. I would like to uh, uh, contribute whatever uh, I can uh, for uh, the transformation of uh, uh, Ethiopia, which has suffered a, a lot under uh, succeeding mm -hmm. regimes and tyrants. So. Uh, it all depends on how this uh, reform plays out I I in the near future. Okay, so Mohammed, Abebe wants to return home, but he's being cautious because he fears the deep state and he fears those who are trying to undo and unravel all the good work that Abi um, has envisaged and has already done. Is that a fair point? Is the man being reasonable? No, I think anyone including Abebe is welcome to come here and our, you know as you pointed out in the lead up to the question I was very critical of the government as critical of the government as Abebe have been uh, and uh, I'm, I'm here I've, I feel free I feel at home I'm trying to do my best to support this administration I'm trying uh, to talk to people and try to bring about understanding between different groups and different uh, communities the media here is uh, has lacks uh, capacity I'm, I'm working with uh, different groups and trying to help uh, professionalize the media, trying to uh, uh, you know, bring people uh, from abroad who are uh, also interested in being part of this change. I think at this point, yes, there are problems. Yes, the TPLF, in the, uh, it is intelligence uh, apparatus, it is security interests are around uh, and they very much uh, wants to pull us back. But uh, the last time I was on this program, I pointed out that there are uh, two centers of power. That's the power of the people and the power of those uh, that have the guns or the deep state, as we call it. I think Abi has done a very good job of consolidating the, the popular support that he has generated. That cuts across all kinds of uh, political divides. Uh, for that reason alone, I think uh, people are, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, protective of the prime minister. In, mm -hmm. uh, you talk to Ethiopia in Addis Ababa, their primary concern is the security of the prime minister and because they know that uh, there are groups that would, if they can, like to harm, right. harm him. But all that said, I think uh, anyone can come and, and, and you will not be stopped at the airport. You can uh, do whatever you want here, set up shop. Uh, Abebe's network has opened an office here. I don't see why Abebe doesn't have the confidence to come here when people who lead the organization that uh, uh, are that have been uh, categorized as terrorist organizations are here right. in organizing and talking to okay. people. So I think the diaspora should come. This is a great time to come and help Ethiopia move forward. Okay. Well, Abebe is giving it some time. We're all giving him some time, and everybody's watching Ethiopia. It's a tremendous time for the country right now. Next time on the Newsmakers, we'll take a high definition, higher resolution look at the thaw between Ethiopia and Eritrea. But for the moment, gentlemen, I have to move on. I thank you for joining us on the Newsmakers. Mohamed Ademo, Abebe Galo, and also, unfortunately, we lost his window, Awel Alo. Thanks again, gentlemen.